Hello, and welcome to this open topography tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be describing how to use LAST tools, and in particular, LAST view. LAST view is a very powerful tool for visualizing point cloud data sets, as well as their attributes, such as classification. And I highly recommend that you use LAST view when starting to work with a new data set, as this visualization can give you a lot of insight into the specifics of your data sets. So here is an outline of the presentation for today. I will begin by describing how to download LAST tools. And in particular, we will then download LAST view, which is this viewer for LIDAR data that is part of the free set of tools within LAST tools. So I'll show you how to open and run different parts of LAST tools. And then we'll discuss three examples, Salt Lake City, Christ Church, and Los Angeles, as these each contain interesting parts about the point cloud data sets. So to begin to download LAST tools, you can search for uh, LAST tools download and it will probably be one of the first page, or first searches that come up. So we'll then click the download rapid lasso link, which will then take us to here, where we have options to download last tools for Windows and well as well as for Linux. So I suggest that you download whichever version is most appropriate for you. And you can also find information on last tools. This page contains the list of all LAST tools that are available. Um, and you can see the tools are listed by either open source, free, or licensed. Licensed means that the tools, uh, you either have to buy it or you can use in a demo version with very strict limitations on the uh, size of data set. You can down look, uh, scroll down and find last view under visualization. And you'll see again, it says viewer for LIDAR data and last tools is free, which is good for us today. So when you download last tools, you'll download a last tools dot zip file and you can unzip that file. You will then get last tools. And I've now put the last tools directory in the desktop of my computer. So we can then double click last tools. Now if we double click it once, we get here where we have options to look at the bin. Our bin includes all of the scripts that are part of last tools. So we can double click bin. And here we see a set of readmes. And I do highly recommend that you review these readmes as they have a lot of information about the options available within each of the last tools functions. And if we zoom down, you can find these applications and they are one way for running last tools. And I do recommend that you put any uh, point cloud, so LAS or LAZ files, either directly within this bin directory or within a folder within the bin directory because that makes it then quite easy to call um, and apply different functions of last tools since they are located adjacent to last tools functions. And now for last view, while we could click on these uh, one of these applications to open it, I'm going to show you how to open it via the command line. So if you're on a Windows machine, you'll want to search uh, CMD. And that will give you the option of the command prompt. So we'll click that. And then the first step is to navigate to the directory uh, where we have, um, or it's, it's to navigate to the bin directory. So we want to do a CD desktop last tools slash bin. And then the command to use last view is quite simple. In fact, we can review it in the readme. So we'll open up last view. 
And in last view, we can see the uh, command for opening up some of the files. And the most uh, simple way to execute last view is to do last view dash i and then the name of your LAS file. So we'll do that. So back here in the command prompt, we'll go last view dash i. We have a data set SLC, Salt Lake City dot LAZ. So we type that. And then we open it and we click enter and then this opens. And now we have last view running. Okay, so here is the first data set that we're going to be looking at with last view. This data set is in Salt Lake City. And I picked it partially because it has color, although this is an exception and most data sets don't have color. So I just opened this using last view via the command line. And let's look and see what we can see about this data with last view. So first, here we can see that we're looking at an area with uh, covering a freeway with some suburban housing, and this is in Salt Lake City. And right now we're on the pan option, which you can see here in the top left, and that lets us navigate the data. And also press the space bar to navigate the data in a different way. So now we can translate. So this lets us move the data set around. We can then also zoom, zoom in. Uh, let's take a second, there we go. Zoom in, zoom out. We can press the space bar again and get back to tilt. So then now we want to right click and this will then give us different ways of displaying the data set. So for example, we can color by these different attributes and these will be available even if they're not included as attributes in your data. So you can color by classification. And here we can see that there are these three different classifications which are very likely to be ground, unclassified, and noise. You can color by elevation. So here we see uh, the red to yellow showing the elevation. And this road here is the higher elevation terms or locations along with the electrical line. You can color by intensity. And I often like to color by intensity in cases that there's no RGB available, as this lets me really get a good sense for what the area looks like. You can color by return. This is looking at probably first, middle, and last returns. Color by flight line. So here we see that there are these through or six different pro, uh, flight lines over this part of the data set. Also have options to render only different aspects of the data. For example, we could render only last returns, in which case we're more likely to see points that are part of the ground surface versus vegetation. We can render only by different classifications. For example, by ground, you can also render by vegetation. And now our data set's gone. And this is because there were no points that were classified as vegetation, the classification values ranging from three to five. So our data set here is shown as empty. But we can see it again by saying render only all returns and our data set is back. And the last thing for this data set is I'm gonna show you how to make a cross section. So we wanna press X and that then generates this uh, red line across the data. We can move it up and down using the arrows. And then when we're happy with the location, we can press the X button and that will then generate, uh, just display that data in uh, the area that was selected. 
And this does let us see that particular location better. For example, we can see the elevated road as well as the vegetation. And then to exit this cross-section view, you want to do Shift X. And that then sends us back here. Now we're going to be looking at a different example. This is in Christchurch in New Zealand. In some ways, this is more typical in that it doesn't have RGB. So here is what the data set looks like. And we have some buildings here, a lot of vegetation. However, what jumps out first at me are these uh, stripes, which are both oriented approximately north-south. And then we have these thinner east-west oriented stripes. So we can use last view to get a little bit of a better sense of what these stripes represent and perhaps what sort of issues they might cause in any analysis with this data set. So let's color by elevation. So when we color by elevation, I still see this area, again, with these buildings and vegetation, but fortunately those quite prominent uh, our stripe issues look to be less prominent. So that's good news. We can now decide to color by intensity, which lets us still very nicely see the area. And let's render different classifications. And so one reason why I picked this data set is it does have quite a few classifications that we can explore. So let's first look at unclassified. And now this does look a little bit weird because we see that the, uh, classific the unclassified points seem to be particularly located along these uh, stripes that looked a little bit funky earlier. So it is what it is, but let's keep on looking at the data. So render only, and let's look at ground. So now fortunately these weird patterns with the stripes are gone and our data set looks quite flat. And that is because we're looking at only ground classified points in an area with apparently very little topographic relief. Let's look at render only uh, vegetation. So classifications three to five. Now we have, uh, looks like largely uh, trees. So it's probably some vegetation located around different buildings and roads. Render only buildings. Now we do very nicely see a set of points that are classified as buildings. Render only noise. Now this gives us this fairly scattered set of a uh, relatively small number of points that have been classified as noise. Render only water. Here we have a few points that have been classified as water. We are now going to use last view to look in an example. We have quite a significant error or issue in the data set and think about how we can use last view to correct this error. So here we are looking at a data set in Los Angeles. And if we open it and uh, rotate it around, we see that we have this very odd set of dense points that appears to be above our data set. And these points are gonna cause some real issues for interpreting and for example, building a digital elevation model out of this data. So let's use last view to learn a little bit more about this data set. So we can say color by, and let's color by intensity. So we can see the underlying area. We see that there is a road, some houses and vegetation. But again, we still do have this set of dense points above the ground surface. So one option that we can look at with uh, last view is to remove points that have been withheld and points that are withheld are classified as essentially as unreliable. So we can do last view and then add the option of drop withheld. And we can open that. And it still seems like we have this 
really set large set of um, points here that are above our ground surface. So let's uh, not look at that anymore. And apparently removing these drop withheld points did not help. So we'll open up the full data set again. And I want to color by intensity, again, to get a better sense of what the data set looks like. And now let's look at a few options. So let's render only ground points. So when we rendered only ground points, actually, it's good news because our area of all of, or all of those dense points above our scene have now been deleted. So we know that these points are not classified as ground. So if we're looking, for example, to build a digital terrain model, well, problem solved, we've now removed those points. If we're looking to build a digital surface model, we'll look at something with the vegetation, then this suggests that we may be able to use a tool like last height to remove points that are significantly above our ground surface.